Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 2021 Leti Device Workshop. My name is Thomas Signamarché, and on behalf of Leti, I am delighted to welcome you today for this workshop. First of all, I would like to thank our sponsor for their continuous support to our events. Many thanks to all of them. Also, debate and discussion are never very convenient in digital events, but please do not hesitate to use our chat system. We will answer to every question. For this workshop, we, propose, we choose to propose you a stronger phases on telecommunication. A couple of decades ago, this is how we were discovering the world and getting news. Not so interactive and practical. Today, with the progress in telecommunication, we are able to have online video with people in space, such as our French astronaut Thomas Pesquet. Clearly, Telecommunication brought new usages and new way of living, and we believe that it is a perfect time to analyze and discuss about this. Let me please share with you the agenda of our workshop. We will propose you three keynotes. Sebastian Dove, Chief Executive Officer of Leti, will open the workshop with a vision of efficient telecommunications. Christophe Malville, Chief Technology Officer of Soitec, will then present his vision about how material innovation could provide improvement and added value for RF devices. And then, Mrs. Vida Hildorem, Vice President and Director of Wireless System Research at Intel, will conclude these keynotes with a vision of telecommunication towards the next CG standards. For the focus session, we will have four presentations from our expert, Stéphanie Richet, Martin Galezo, Jean-Baptiste Doré, and Emilio Calvanese Strinati. They will cover every aspect of the telecommunication, from semiconductor devices up to system and network. Let's start the keynote session with Sébastien Dové, Chief Executive Officer of Fleti. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm Sébastien Dové, CEO of CLAT, and it's my pleasure to open this year's Leti Device Workshop, focused on telecommunications and our vision of its future. The incredible pandemic situation we all faced almost two years ago put quite a stop to our physical world. Most of us had to stay home to ensure our safety and the safety of others. Many things were put on hold and hurting images of the empty streets in Paris remain in our minds. In response to COVID-19, people demonstrated amazing resilience in every possible sphere of life. Indeed, despite the lockdown, we, life went on and we all found ways to adapt in our daily lives. We still had to eat and a lot of us massively adopted and sometimes even discovered home delivery services. Most of us continu continued working from home and honestly, I don't know how we could have achieved that without 4G. We also had to take care of our family, and many of us became part-time teachers, doing the best we could. It was clearly very difficult to combine home teaching and working. In the end, technology was used at an unprecedented scale, and tools such as tutorials and remote learning became second nature. The coronavirus pandemic boosted social media usage. As many people stayed home for weeks or months at a time, in order to mitigate loneliness and social isolation, families made regular use of virtual connection with their relatives and friends. I'm pretty sure we all participated in digital anniversaries or happy hours. We had to explore new ways to take care for our families and help them to stay healthy and active. And, and telecommunication played an important part in our new habits. Indeed, COVID accelerated the adoption of digital health technologies, telemedicine, remote monitoring, and connected devices. In 2020, many companies were forced into measures to protect their people and maintain operations in their factories. To this end, connectivity and digitalization help them to keep their operation running during the crisis. In that context, use cases for 5G 
industrial applications have been growing rapidly. Clearly, 5G connectivity has demonstrated its capacity to leverage technologies such as automation, Internet of Things, and robotics, enabling them to move toward the factory of the future. Nothing has put more pressure on the telecommunication infrastructure than the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a significant increase of bandwidth, but also a massive increase in the demand from residential areas. Telecom operators worked hard to ensure generalized access to the networks. We all fully realized how much we depend on telecommunication and the strong pillar it represents for our society, especially RF telecommunication. The history of telecommunication standards began with 2G, which was also called Global System for Mobiles, GSM, in Finland. 2G marked the birth of digital communication, and since then, standards evolved every, every decade, bringing us 3G and 4G. Each new standard brought significant changes in the way we use them, from simple text message to live video streaming. Today, the rollout of 5G has begun and its promise is to boost data rates for consumer smartphones all the way up to 10 gigabit per second. But 5G offers many more benefits and the capability for new services such as mission-critical services and massive IoT. It really provides access to massive connectivity at the consumer level, but also in sectors like industry, smart cities, precision agriculture, and many more. And now it's time to prepare 6G. This new communication generation could be deployed starting in 2030. 6G is expected to intertwine the digital, physical, and human worlds. People speak of remote automation, virtual reality, and even holographic telepresence. But we can also expect 6G technology to enable new and unpredictable businesses, as was the case for previous generations. Looking at these trends, we realize the great impact telecommunication has on semiconductor industry. Today, the communication market has stabilized and represents roughly 35% of the semiconductor market. But the market is still growing, and revenues should continue to increase. We expect that the impact of telecommunications on the semiconductor industry will increase as well, and that no one will want to miss out on this opportunity. Each new telecom generation brings an increase in operating frequency. As the frequency increases, it's easier to find new available bandwidth. And so each new frequency complements the previous one, offering a wider communication channel and increased bandwidth. But as we reach very high frequency, typically above 100 gigahertz, there are clearly huge challenges in terms of semiconductor devices as there are no ready hardware solutions on, on the shelf today. Therefore, there is a strong need for innovation and development of new RF semiconductor components and systems to sustain the higher telecom generation. 5G has begun to significantly modify telecommunication networks, whereas a couple of years ago, connectivity was essentially composed of base stations and smartphones, we are now connecting more and more edge devices. These devices range from a simple connected object to an, an autonomous vehicle. For some applications, latency will be a critical parameter. 
Overall, there will be a wide range of specifications to be met and one of the important challenges for the networks will be to support and efficiently manage all of the performance parameters. In order to tackle the challenges of future networks, advanced research and innovation on physical layers will be key. Three major pillars will have to be addressed. First, data propagation and latency issues. Second, antenna design. And third, new disruptive components for RF front-end radio. Where, if concerns data propagation, we will have to master the spectral energy and efficiency, the scalability, the use of AI as a booster for the network. These challenges will be covered by Stephanie and Jean-Baptiste in their presentation. Regarding antennas, we identify three major challenges. Eigen antennas, beam steering to focus on the devices and maximize data transfer, and co-integration of antennas and circuits, sometimes in the same package. These issues will also be covered by Stephanie and Jean-Baptiste. And finally, for the RF components, we have identified two key points. First, we need scalability over the full range of frequencies with very high efficiency and linearity. And second, integrating shiplets should help provide very efficient RF modules and systems. Marty, Martin and Jean-Baptiste will explain these key points in their presentation. What seems obvious to me is that telecommunication are entering a new era. Until now, telecommunication systems have been built using on-the-shelf components and technologies, benefiting from well-established semiconductor technology. With 5G telecommunication systems are using cutting-edge technology such as 7 or 5 nanometer knot. Tomorrow, we will need new components and technologies to support the future specifications of 6G. We are entering in an era where the telecom companies have no other choice than to take the lead in developing new devices. Some big players of the telecommunication sectors have already proven that mastering the entire value chain allows them to optimize the world system and provide very efficient services. So clearly, exciting times are ahead of us with a new and wide landscape of innovation and new challenges for the semiconductor industry. Last but not least, something which is maybe the most important to me. More and more technologies must address the needs of our society and contribute to human progress. Today, there's a great demand for sustainable and trustworthy digital technologies. Our decade must really be a decade of action. And CLAT is mobilized to develop more sustainable semiconductor technologies. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sébastien, for your vision. Indeed, you are definitely right. Telecommunication evolution is a question of usages, and usages should now more than ever be sustainable and trustable. Let me now please welcome Mr. Christophe Malville, Chief Technology Officer of Soytech, to share with us his vision about system enhancement based on materials and genre. Hello to all of you. I am Christophe Melville, CTO of Soitec, and I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to tell you how we design engineered substrate as a soil for boosting devices. A special thank you to Thomas, Jean-René, and Sébastien from Leti for such opportunity. I will first briefly link material properties, applications, and engineered substrate offer for telecom requirements. Then I will see more in details SOI-based substrate for 5G, and then push the limits 
with three five active layers. 5G, artificial intelligence, battery life, all are evidence of the impact of semiconductors on our daily lives. And 6G, quantum computing, virtualization, healthcare will all contribute to further expanding the place of semiconductor in our future. Our technologies and engineered substrates are bridging material science with applications, allowing electrons, photons, electromagnetic waves or the piezoelectric effects to make our lives better. In order to achieve this, the development of advanced technologies is critical to design best engineered substrates. We now clearly see two families, our well-known SOI products, portfolio that we are continuously improving, and the emerging so-called anything and anything solutions, including 3.5 active layers, I will highlight today when looking at 5G or 6G applications. This is driving me to requirement for 5G beyond 5G and 6G systems. 5G is calling for more stringent parameters when compared to what we know from 4G. With beyond 5G and 6G, any key parameter requirement is twice up to 100 times more demanding. While reaching terawatts frequencies, while integrating best-in-class technology in RF front-end module. I will, detail main, I will detail main blocks of this RF front-end module. We can see that our engineered substrate are bringing a perfect coverage for various spectrum domains, domains from 5G to Wi-Fi, of course, including millimeter wave. Please note here new piezoelectronic and insulator substrate for filtering device in 4G, 5G, and Wi-Fi blocks. As for 4G, RF SOI best serves low noise amplifiers, switch, and antenna tuners, while gallium nitrine brings more power and performance for power amplifiers. FD SOI clearly brings perfect SOC integration capabilities in millimeter wave. Let me now describe a few examples of RF SOI, FD SOI, and further GAN. RF SOI is now a well-known structure allowing silicon CMOS high performance on high linearity substrate. With low transmission losses, high linearity, and opportunity for great temperature stability, RF SOI is now a standard for 4G in all smartphones. Latest results are demonstrating that RF SOI can also be used for 5G and beyond. This quick example when printing more advanced devices at 45 nanometer node on RF SOI, very recent paper have shown that beam forming phase array transmitters can be operated at 140 gigahertz, getting close to the 6G specifications. FDSOI substrates provide atomic level thickness control for transistors channel together with back biasing capabilities with ultra thin buried oxide. This brings to FDSOI device superior power performance capabilities, but also low power consumption at high frequency, lower noise, and less parasitics. These features position FDSOI as ideal platform for SOC integration with millimeter wave front end module, with key building blocks showing excellent performance. First smartphone operating 5G millimeter wave on FDSOI are now available, and we can anticipate they will prove less power consumption in 5G operations. We are, of course, further improving FDSOI structures, so-called FD plus HR engineered substrates, combining FDSOI and RFSOI best features to enable better RF passives and higher on-chip antenna efficiency. Let's now move from silicon active layers to 3.5 materials. Our Epigan products produced at Soitec Belgium is offering gallium nitride on silicon on silicon carbide for high frequency operations. Playing with advanced barriers and passivation layer, high performance devices can be demonstrated at 40 gigahertz and larger FT and Fmax can be achieved for handset or base station. As a result, a complete roadmap of high electron mobility transistors can be built on GAN. 
on GAN substrates to cover wide range of applications and operating frequencies. I would like here to disclose new substrate innovation ongoing at Soitec, opening a path for co-integration with GAN. GAN on SOI, GAN on RF SOI, we aim then to improve vertical isolation and linearity and reduce capacitance for higher bandwidth. In Integration is key in 5G design, and this could allow power amplifier, low noise amplifier, and switch integration for mobile applications. At this point, we have seen how RFSOI, FDSOI, and gallium nitride are valid options for 5G and beyond 5G applications. When thinking about covering entire 6G space, indium phosphide material is bringing superior performance. And indeed, indium phosphide has major advantages for RF. This, this benchmark of different material is confirming INP, HBT, and HEMT as best FTF max options. INP is allowing very low flicker noise, high mobility, high gain, and higher thermal conductivity powering INP uh, high electron mobility transistors. But, and there's a major drawback associated with bulk INP material. It is expensive, low, availab low availability, and availability only in low diameter wafers, and these wafers are very brittle. This is perfect case for our smart cut technology to multiply unique INP materials in large number of engineered substrates. But first prerequisite that is needed, of course, thanks to extensive R&D with our LITI partners, we have demonstrated ability to smart cut INP donor wafer on multiple receiver substrates, building INP on silicon, on gas, or on sapphire, with perfect transfer of crystalline quality and controlled interface. Now, another demonstration of our ongoing R&D at Substrate Innovation Center with Leti, the combination of SmartCut INP with tiling technology. This comes in two steps. We are first building a pseudo donor wafer by paving a silicon wafer with INP tiles from a smaller diameter wafer. After surface processing, we can then smart cut such pseudo donor and transfer thin INP areas onto silicon, creating 200 or 300 millimeter INP on silicon substrates. Very key element for cost and environment friendly approach, donor can be reused as many times as the yield allows. The road to high volume manufacturing is yet long, but we already can demonstrate 200 millimeter in posi, iron phosphide on silicon wafer, ready for epitaxy and 6G or optoelectronics applications. We are now following same path to demonstrate 300 millimeter INP on silicon, solving limitation of INP regarding cost and large volume availability. Let me now conclude my talk. So it takes engineered substrate today enable 5G and millimeter wave devices at best energy efficiency. RFSOI, FDSOI, and FDSOI plus HR SOC technology for logic analog co-integration and efficient antenna on chip solutions. Gallium nitride solution, GAN on RFSOI, is here to enhance GAN adoption for handset application at mid-band millimeter wave. And Finally, SmartCut will bring new materials in large diameter to boost performance in beyond 5G and 6G. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Christophe, for your interesting vision of innovation. To conclude our keynote, I am delighted to welcome Mrs. Vida Hilderen, Vice President and Director of Wireless System Research at Intel, who will share with us a vision of the past world fifth 6G requirements. Good morning. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers, workshop organizers, for the opportunity to present on this exciting topic of 
path towards 6G and what are the technology requirements. My name is Vida Ildram and uh, myself and Vivek Day are from Intel Labs. So uh, I would like to start with some key messages. A uh, key uh, computing is shifting to edge networks and we need to have innovations from system all the way down to components and silicon. And one of the key enablers is going to be heterogeneous integration and advanced packaging to decrease uh, a complexity. So let's uh, look at some trends for past and future. Uh, what we are seeing uh, is that the world is digitizing in a very fast pace. Everything from our books to our uh, media to our uh, health records. And uh, what we're seeing is that we do business, our personal and professional business, more and more on internet. So for things that are uh, can be digitized, we also show them a digital pr uh, presentation, like when you want to uh, reserve a table at a restaurant, you can do so with the new applications. So everything is becoming a data and it provides its own challenges and opportunities. So one of the uh, industries that have been mostly affected with digitalization is uh, the media and publishing. In this case, uh, as the wave uh, passes through the industry, we can see that uh, there have been dramatic changes to the way we uh, use our uh, media, uh, for instance, uh, movies, the way the animations work, and uh, with the new introduction of new technologies, the way we uh, consume and distribute content. And uh, finally, on uh, digital storytelling, you know, how can we even inter uh, interact with books and holograms and other things. So it's a very uh, exciting and new uh, era uh, ahead of us. Looking at the computer um, communication convergence, uh, historically, if you look at personal computers and 2G, uh, we observed that 2G was about digital voice and personal computers were not very mobile. So you didn't even really have that uh, luxury of taking the data with you. Uh, but introduction of 3G, we were able to add data um, to the network and people started using that more and more and especially uh, downloading uh, images. And as the usage gets more, people get more creative how to use the network. And that led to the introduction of broadband internet on the compute side of it. Uh, 4G was more about, OK, I have my data. Now I want to be mobile. I wanted to take it everywhere with me, with any device I have. And that um, I want to have the bandwidth. I want to have a, a data rate. And I don't want the, I would like to have access anywhere. So that led to the mobile and cloud computing and the compute side of it. And then there is the introduction of 5G, where we say compute and comps came together. Uh, 5G introduced, uh, in, as a protocol, introduced uh, uh, introduction of machine type communication in addition to human type com com communication, which introduced also its, some of its own challenges. But more excitingly, it brought the cloud uh, to, up to the edge and to the devices. So beyond 5G, we're looking at where the network and computing become more um, intelligent and distributed. Uh, but mobile uh, usage just continues to grow. So if we look at the a uh, billion of uh, you know devices coming online. Uh, prediction is about 500 billion, 500 billion of interconnected devices by 2030. Uh, we look at uh, human communication with enhanced uh, broadband, mobile broadband, with increasing the subscribers by 2024 by another 1.9 billion, and then with the also low latency and reliability going towards more autonomous systems specifically fully autonomous car, is predicted to be about 34 uh, million by 2040. 
So 5G uh, continues to drive economic value and st industry transformation, and 6G is going to continue uh, to build on this. Having said this, so we have now machines coming online, we have uh, human communications, there's interactions. So the nature of data is changing. Uh, the data is increasingly being created at where the uh, edge node is. Um, so it's more of inbound. Um, also, we observe that uh, the nature of the data is becoming more real time. It's a very uh, tight interaction loop between the humans and machines. We also observe that because we are creating so much data, we want to act on that data, and it's becoming increasingly infused with uh, artificial intelligence or AI to make sense out of data. And uh, finally, because there are so many nodes now becoming available, they're becoming incre increasingly uh, wirelessly connected to the network. All of this uh, uh, leads to the uh, points to the that traditional networks uh, will be uh, approaches will not be scalable for future needs of uh, communication. So to summarize the trends we are observing, uh, the data trends seem to, uh, are challenging our networks. Uh, we have billions of devices that are becoming connected, um, which is driving the capacity for the network, how to scale it. Uh, we have video content, um, which is uh, exploding. Video is uh, one of the largest uh, loads, workloads, uh, traffic workloads on the network. And people are not going to wait for that uh, circling, buffering thing. Uh, the, the, the need is to be more real time. Uh, with AI, uh, infuses experiences and processes with data. We want to make sense of data. That also brings the security and privacy concerns uh, up front. And finally, machine-to-machine -machine opportunity uh, communication opens opportunities uh, for requ uh, requiring uh, low latency, a highly reliable um, network. So what is the path forward? I have to say first that we are still not done with 5G. Um, so if you look at the three services 5G addresses, one is enhanced broadband, which is your human-to-human -human communication. I need higher data rate. I need uh, better throughput capacity coverage. And then the other two legs of this tool is um, a massive machine type communication. This is about set and forget nodes, sensor nodes, is about uh, IoT uh, devices, which are low power, long battery life, um, wide area network, low data rates in kilobits per second versus gigabits per second for more of a human type communication, and very high density uh, of uh, number of sensors being available, devices per uh, kilometer squares. And the, and the last one is, uh, as I said, to have a ultra reliable and low latency calm. Um, in this case, you're looking about a millisecond type of latency and at least five nines high reliability. So there's still work going on on machine type communication, but there has been a, a significant rollout of 5G, especially for mobile enhanced mobile broadband. And each uh, node of G takes about 10 years and 5G is a little bit more uh, accelerated. So uh, with the arrival of 5G and with the uptick of uh, Internet of Things, what we're seeing is uh, what we call emergence of edge network. So if you look at the edge network and you say we have devices, we have radio access, we have core network, and we have cloud uh, data center for a uh, compute side of it, we see that the radio access technology and radio access network now is stretching where the compute is getting closer to where the data is created. Um, this is for some of the trends, as I say, we see for latency and reliability reasons. And uh, with this uh, is where the edge uh, uh, came becomes uh, very prevalent. So you can have an edge closer to the devices and you have a kind of an edge closer to the uh, core network. So um, 
So we see edge as a very important um, play in future. So networks are transforming to a uh, distributed paradigm. What we mean by that is you don't have only one edge. You have many edges. And uh, edges are, are distributed through, throughout the network because that's the last point that you connect to the access the um, devices. So we need to address this distributed paradigm and have technologies to address that. So uh, looking at uh, towards 6G, how do we frame our expectation for the next generation of systems? So we can say for, uh, you know, uh, 4G was more of a faster pipe, you know, 5G added the verticals and made their broader markets. And 6G now we need to upgrade our platforms to integrate compute and data, or you can say data also refers to infusing it with intelligence um, or AI. So 6G is the opportunity uh, to bring compute and data services, which in turn helps to bring uh, communication um, um, services as well. Uh, but this uh, requires some technology requirements. Uh, we always want 10x uh, better uh, key performance indicators, so we continue to improve the uh, performance of the network. Uh, we need to have um, um, better uh, communication for data and compute and data and compute for communication. We need to pay attention more to security, have better verticals, and how else can we use these technologies for uh, applications beyond um, uh, communication, like sensing. So as we move towards 6G, uh, we are going to see a confluence of com communication, computation, and AI, which will unleash a new wave of opportunities, especially in the domains. Uh, it's exciting time for research and R&D, I have to say. So uh, we believe the networks will become intelligent and distributed, scalable, and programmable set of platforms across the continuum for data delivery. So let's look at the first uh, instantiation of devices and what we mean by edge compute node. What are the technologies required? Edge nodes, especially if you're talking about IoT nodes for perpetual sensing, uh, really needs uh, innovations, technology innovations, specifically on energy efficiency and power consumption. Um, devices are going to be always on. They're going to be intelligent. So I like to take the two examples for you on the communication um, side of it. So let's take an example on wireless uh, local access network, in this case, Wi-Fi. Uh, there is a standard that has been approved called for Wake Up Radio 802.11.ba. And how do we integrate that Wi-Fi? The idea is your Wi-Fi platform will be asleep. Um, your wake-up radio is on, and when a packet arrives, the wake-up radio will wake up your main platform, Wi-Fi platform, to receive the packet. Um, in this case, uh, we want the wake-up radio still should be comparable in communication range and quality as Wi-Fi, and it has to be very low power. It has to work in parallel with the Wi-Fi receiver. And uh, right now, as depicted in this picture, a cartoon it shares the same um, front end RF port and the TR uh, switches as the main Wi Fi platform. Um, we did build this circuit and uh, it interlaps. We integrated a, a, a wake up radio uh, with a low band uh, Wi Fi, uh, a, a product worthy Wi Fi, production quality Wi Fi. And we noted that with this um, scheme, um, the uh, wake up radio consumed uh, about uh, 500 microwatts of power uh, when with the internal supplies and about 670 microwatts of power when with the external supply. The majority of power was consumed in the LO and VCO. And you always look at trade-off as when you add this extra capability, it is more power efficient 
but you also have to reduce the area and make it as compact as possible. So we show the proof of concept that this works and um, it, it does deliver to the promise of low power uh, uh, platforms for future of um, edge node devices that require low power. The other end of the spectrum is to look at the cellular. So here's, uh, and the cellular spectrum is a scarce uh, uh, resources. So, and it's very fragmented because we're trying to harmonize the spectrum across the globe. You don't want to go a cellular spectrum. You don't want to go to another country, you know, you're traveling and you have to uh, use a different modem or you have a dongle so you can connect to the network. So you can see that the this is an example of uh, LTE, 4G. You can see that there is a large number of uh, bands, um, all the way from uh, ultra high band to uh, low band. And with the advent of 5G, and we call it 5G new radio, there are more bands introduced, for instance, the less than six gigahertz, around 3.5, 3.6, um, which we call CBRS, and also introduction of centimeter and millimeter waves. So this really complicates the RF front end uh, for the uh, devices. And so we need innovation, um, specifically if you look at it for the filter technologies. Um, uh, front end modules are getting complicated, many bands, uh, you, you have to worry about interference and of course the power and uh, footprint cost, total cost of uh, ownership and um, form factor. So we need high efficient and broadband filters. This can be addressed by materials like single crystal piezo materials. Uh, it could be addressed by design using configurable and tunable filters for programmability or specifically um, can be looked at electro acoustic electrical filtering and designs uh, for this uh, tunability. Uh, we need to have an opportunity to integrate multiband filters. There's always trade-offs when we do that. Um, but again, it goes back to uh, total cost of ownership and the performance uh, cost trade-offs. And uh, most of the filters today is because of, um, you know, for G bands, uh, most of the 5G bands are focused on lower, less than six gigahertz uh, frequency, but we also need filters which operate at uh, centimeter and uh, millimeter waves. So there's a huge opportunity here. Now, moving, shifting towards the middle of the edge uh, network, let's look at some radio access technology and radio access network side of things. In this case, some of the example of core technology uh, moving beyond 5G towards 6G, you still have to have uh, antennas. Antennas is a big part of this for capacity throughput. New radios, you have new modulation, new air interfaces. Uh, there will be probably more spectrum introduce, talking about X spectrum, you have a cellular, which is a license, you have uh, unlicensed bands such as Wi-Fi, you get shared spectrum um, because of the scarcity of the spectrum. Energy, we talked about low energy system and green communication is also becoming an important platform. Network intelligence is how you apply AI to make your networks more efficient and uh, also how network also can help uh, compute and AI to become uh, better um, in their domains. And multi-rad radio access technology is, we don't work only with one protocol, you know, we may have 4G, 5G, 6G, a Wi-Fi. As a user, you just wanna be connected. So how do you enable this uh, multi-rad operation? So I, I like to take opportunity now to give an example of the uh, example for um, antennas. Here we look at the massive MIBO, multi-input, multi-output uh, antennas. And these are becoming more important, especially in higher bands because of the capacity and the higher data rate per user. So you want to have digital beamforming, you have to have increased bandwidth. And that really increases the complexity between the base station and the remote radio heads. So how would you address this? How can we have uh, RF transceiver SOCs incorporating multiple direct converted uh, RF uh, uh, transmitters? And I'd like to take you to an example. Um, 
here is looking at a RF SOC for a sub-6 gigahertz 5G um, base station. This is a soft radio, which has the capability of supporting different bands uh, for a given standard with a single architecture. So you can add uh, extra bands theoretically with a firmware upgrade. Uh, but the key here is that you need a high speed data converters uh, to handle the direct RF sampling. We have some of this published in this year's ISCCC 2021, um, looking at 16 and 64 gigabit uh, samples per second, and also how to reduce the jitter uh, for the digital PLL. So the innovation is very important. Um, we have to reduce complexity, and these are some of the design ideas. I'm moving more towards virtualization and soft radio type uh, uh, innovation to uh, improve and uh, reduce the complexity. And that leads us to um, heterogeneous integration and disaggregation um, with using advanced packaging and interoperable chiplets. So you can have a package of libraries from 2D to 2.5D to 3D. You can have a package of chiplet libraries where you can mix and match different chips and IP for your specific design. And, which, and that makes the interface standards very important because these chiplets have to, chips have to communicate with each other. They can be from different nodes, from a leading edge for performance or a, a lagging edge more for custom and specialized nodes, like for instance, RF and analog. Um, you can have optical IO, you can have power management uh, um, die IP. So this type of uh, disaggregation allows us to build the systems that we need and optimize uh, for the workloads that we need uh, for future. And, and we can uh, improve both performance and power efficiency at the system level with this. So to summarize, the journey towards 6G has started. Um, and that goes with a confluence of uh, comps, compute, 5G and AI and edge, they are complementing each other and accelerating one another, and that's where it takes us to 6G. Network complexity continues to increase and it drives innovation from system level all the way to, down to components. And heterogeneous integration, advanced packaging is one key enabler to uh, reduce this uh, complexity. Um, with that, um, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vida, for your vision of telecommunication evolution. This concludes the keynote part of the workshop. Let's now move to the focus presentation. This is Stephanie Richet, Business Development Manager at Leti. We'll start with the first presentation aiming at addressing very high data rate systems from requirements up to solutions. Hello, my name is Stéphanie Richer. With this talk, I will introduce some of the latest results from CLET teams in terms of wireless communication systems for very high data rates. The flow of information is fundamental to our society, and communication infrastructures are the structural backbone of the digital world. Data traffic is expected to roughly double every year from 1,700 exabytes in 21 to 590,000 exabytes in 30, as all types of objects are interconnected at an accelerating pace. Some of these interconnections require wireless high data rates for different application scenarios. As a result, a variety of key performance indicators must be addressed. For instance, the exchange of real-time data streams will facilitate the sharing of medical imagery equipment and information between medical staff. In this scenario, the communication range is typically of a couple of meters indoors with strong energy constraints for the mobile visualization device while providing several gigabits per second. 
In areas like factories or construction sites, there's a need for enhanced hotspots to support immersive experiences. This will require data rates in the tens of gigabits per second, with support for multiple mobile users, as well as consumption and cost constraints. Extreme capacity hauling, whether for terrestrial communications or satellite communications, may be less constrained in terms of power consumption, but require a range of tens to hundreds of kilometers and a data rate of tens to hundreds of gigabits per second. This diversity of usage relies on two scarce resources, energy and frequency spectrum. Data capacity is directly linked to the width of the frequency band. Large bandwidths are available at high frequency. Designing high frequency systems requires optimizations at the component level. The baseband modem must deliver high out of band rejection waveforms for interference free coexistence with legacy transmissions in adjacent bands. The intermediate to higher frequency conversion block has to implement low phase noise oscillators to convert the signal up to millimeter wave frequencies. Energy efficient linear power amplifiers over larger bandwidths are necessary to boost the signal ahead of the RF beam former. High data rate system design is also a matter of system level optimization to reach the targeting operating point with multiple trade-offs. For instance, a high order of modulation will improve spectral efficiency for a given bandwidth but increases linearity constraints for the power amplifier and performance requirements for phase noise oscillators. A trade-off has also to be made between PA output power and antenna gain to achieve a given range at a reasonable power consumption and antenna size. One of the most power-hungry components in a wireless system is a power amplifier. SOI CMOS is a key enabling technology for the integration of high efficiency power amplifiers. The Doherty architecture is interesting to obtain higher PA efficiency and linearity, which is essential to amplify high order quant transmission, as these modulated signals have a high peak to average power ratio. However, traditional Doherty architecture suffers from narrow band characteristics. So to address these limitations, we have developed a tunable PA architecture. A PA module prototype has been designed in 130 nanometer RF SOI to support high power user equipment, reaching a saturated power of 4 watts with a peak efficiency of 57%. Using a 5G signal of with 100 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth, the PA module can deliver 29 dBm of linear output power with less than 2% EVM without digital predistortion. To address very large frequency bandwidths, we have designed a channel bonding architecture in full CMOS. This architecture handles 30 GHz bandwidth at millimeter wells by subdividing it into smaller bandwidth channels that are processed in parallel, hence reducing the complexity of RF building, building blocks, but requiring the generation of multiple local oscillators frequencies with clean spectrum. In this design, 64 QAM modulation is subdivided into 16 channels delivering a fraction of the total data rate using a bandwidth of around 2 GHz. Several low phase noise local oscillators are generated from the same low frequency reference to perform up and down baseband to intermediate frequencies and IF to RF conversions. In order to compensate propagation losses and extend the range at millimeter wave, we designed compact and energy efficient transmitter antennas with beamforming capabilities. Transmitter antennas are a cost effective alternative to phased array where simple switches replace phase shifters. A transmit array consists of a local source that radiates toward a planar array of antenna elements which require no phase shift nor calibration. In the D-band prototype, 
Beam forming is enabled through the use of a panel composed of 40 by 40 unitary antenna elements with a gain of 25 dBi. By assembling the channel bonding RF transceiver and the transmit array, we have demonstrated power efficiency at 84 gigabits per second with an 8 channel link and a 64 quam modulation at 140 gigahertz. We are currently working on the 16 channels version to deliver above 100 gigabits per second data rate. To enable mobility scenarios, the transmit array has to support multiple beam directions. For this purpose, you may either multiply the sources and switch the beam by switching sources, but with a limited number of beam configurations. Or you may pilot unitary antenna, antenna elements on the panel side to dynamically reconfigure the beam with flexibility. With the latter approach, we have demonstrated a transmit array composed of 24 by 24 elements with 2-bit phase resolution operating in the KA band. The transmit array scans in all the azimutal planes in an angular range of plus minus 60 degrees for both circular polarization, RHCP and LHCP, with a maximum gain of 24 dBi and a scan low loss lower than 4.5 dB. Our current research aims at flattening even further the antenna system with a multi-source approach or considering near-field illumination. Beam steering is becoming the norm for advanced wireless communication systems. However, making them energy efficient remains a challenge. Today, most of the literature investigates the use of hybrid beam forming with large antenna array connected to phase shifters but this solution is energy consuming. In our transmit array prototype, we use pine diode switches which have a limited but continuous consumption during antenna system operation. To further reduce the consumptions, we are working with a silicon technology team of Leti to design antenna unitary cell with germanium telluride for switches. GT is a phase change material. Hence, conception occurs only when beam angle has to be modified. Simulation results are submitted to UCAP22, and we are working to deliver a prototype in the coming months. Thank you for your attention. I'll be glad to exchange with you and see how we can collaborate on this road toward efficient, high data rate wireless communications. Thank you, Stephanie. As you said, antenna are a growing challenge and a significant landscape of innovation. Let's now discuss about innovative RF filters with Martin Galezo, Business Development Manager at Leti. This presentation covers Leti's latest achievement in bulk acoustic wave filter. We'll first look at the various technology used for filtering and how new bands demand new solutions. We'll then review Letty's work on bow filter, based on novel thin film piezo material fabricated with smart cut. This is called POI, and we believe this is a game changer. Please note that we restrict ourselves to bands below 10 gig. The filter requirement and handset integration in millimeter wave is not addressed in this presentation. Also, Letty's involvement in future RF front end is not limited to filters. We're actively working on semiconductors technology for next generation front ends toward 300 gigahertz. This will involve hybridation between silicon semiconductors, be it Uh, CMOS or bipolar, and 3.5 semiconductors. But that's the topic for another presentation. Now let's get back to filters. RF front end keep getting more and more complex as new bands need to be accounted for. This translates into more filter being integrated in handset and also new filter requirement, namely higher central frequency and larger bandwidth. These are the main trends that fuel the filter market growth. 
The best seller are still bulk saw base filter. They are mainly built using lithium tantalite and lithium niobat bulk crystal. However, thin film base filter such as TFSO and FBAR are experiencing important growth and they command higher ASP. In these devices, the piezo material is typically aluminum nitrate. It is deposited on the substrate, and the acoustic property of the piezo layers are tightly coupled to the crystal quality of the thin film layer. Consequently, a lot of effort has been invested into better deposition method. These efforts are ongoing with aluminum nitride and scandium dope aluminum nitride. However, an alternative called POI has appeared recently. POI stands for piezo uninsulator. It consists of a substrate made of high resistivity silicon, a buried oxide layer, and on top of that, a thin layer of monocrystal piezo material, typically lithium tantalite or lithium niobat. The thickness and crystalline quality is very tightly controlled by the substrate manufacturer. The buried oxide helps achieve better acoustic property, while the oil resistivity silicon keeps the RF loss low. SY Tech is the leading provider of POI wafer, and POI manufacturing involves smart cut techniques. 6-inch diameter lithium tantalite POI substrate are already used in volume production for saw devices. Various thickness of piezo material are available and larger diameter and other piezo material will soon follow. Letty has been actively working with SY Tech to develop POI. So, let's now look at how you can use POI to build a bow resonator which is the basic building block of a bow filter. For the sake of benchmarking, we'll consider two types of thin film bow. On the left, this is a solidly mounted resonator, SMR, in which the piezo layer is sandwiched between two electrodes and under which stands a Bragg mirror whose function is to confine the acoustic wave in the upper part of the device. On the right, this is a film bulk acoustic resonator, F-bar, a freestanding structure in which the piezo layer is also sandwiched between two electrodes and under which stands an air cavity. The cavity is etched either uh, on the silicon dioxide layer or directly on the wafer. When designing a bow resonator, it is difficult to determine upfront which of these two works better for a given specification. The whole design process involves several key steps that you need to go through. Starting from the piezo material crystal orientation, you go through acoustic modeling using finite, finite elements method, then RF simulation before you can even start a resonator layout. The choice of material for the Bragg mirror and for the electrode is also critical since it will greatly impact the resonator quality factor and also its manufacturability. So, before we dig further into the resonator fabrication process, let me stress out the benefit of working with POI. First, you get to control the crystal structure of the piezo film, its thickness, and most importantly, the uniformity of its thickness. This method is scalable over, over a wide range of frequency. Second, you get this nice monocrystal served on an 8-inch silicon plate, so to speak. This means that standard semiconductor deposition, patterning, and etching equipment can be used for manufacturing. Letty has thoroughly studied the manufacturing process of this device using standard production-grade equipment. We believe that our process can achieve high yields in volume production. So, here how is how it works. The starting point for both devices consists of two wafers. The POI wafer and a high-resistivity silicon wafer with a thin oxide. For both devices, the first process step is to deposit the bottom electrode on the POI wafer. For the F-bar, a sacrificial layer in green in the, in the picture is deposited on top of the electrode. Then for both devices, an oxide is added, 
Uh, separately, the Bragg mirror is fabricated on a high resistivity substrate. Then comes the bonding step, followed by the grinding of the handle wafer and its box, exposing the piezo layer. Finally, the top electrode is deposited and the sacrificial layer is removed. The last step consists of the pads and passivation layer deposition. At this stage, what you get is a resonator. Later on, you will need to combine several of these resonators with different resonant frequency in a ladder structure to form a filter. Now, let's look at the electrical result for the SMR. The red curve here is the simulated response using a Mason model, and the blue curve is the measure response of the resonator. The coupling coefficient that is calculated using the uh, resonant and anti-resonant frequency is quite good. The resonator show no spurious in-band, but quite a bit out-band. Furthermore, the quality factor is still lagging, and that's namely because of the electrode with thickness and deposition quality needs to be improved. Despite that, these are very encouraging achievements at such high frequency. Now let's also look at the results for the F-bar. Here we show three different resonators targeting respectively resonant frequency at 4.7 GHz in the green curve, 7.6 GHz in the purple curve, and uh, 4.2 GHz on the right side of the slide with the red spot. The coupling coefficient at 4.2 and 4.7 are even higher than those achieved with uh, SMR. It is a little lower when targeting 7.6 GHz, but that's ex expected. The quality factor is also much higher, even at 7.6 GHz. Actually, a quality factor of 500 at those frequency is an outstanding achievement. These results are still in publish, so please be patient before we can give you the full picture about that. So, we have shown that building SMR and FBAR at high frequency with POI is possible and that the manufacturing process is relatively straightforward. However, this is not the end of the story since the steps from resonator to filter also require a lot of effort. Please stay tuned for more exciting news on this front. In addition, we're working on filter packaging with, with a view to reduce its cost. Also, we have new design coming for tunable filter, be it so, lamp filter, or both. Last, but certainly not least, Letty is very actively researching new materials and new way of depositing these materials. Thank you very much for your attention, and let's discuss your own technical challenge. We may have a solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Definitely a strong need of new materials and architectures for efficient RF device devices such as filters. Let's now continue with Jean-Baptiste Doré, Telecom and Wireless Program Director at Leti, to address the enabling technologies foreseen for the next te telecommunication generation. Welcome to this talk. My name is Jean-Baptiste Doré. I am a wireless system architect and I lead a LETI program on the subject of the next generation of wireless system. Today, I will give you an, an overview of some activities related to our system department, and I will connect this to our current roadmap at the nanoelectronic and design level. As you know, the traffic is growing exponentially with a current average usage of 10 gigabytes per month per mobile over the cellular networks and a forecast of 35 gigabytes by 2025. 5G, I set the stage to support this exponential growth, but today it's time for academics, research institutes, and R&D departments to figure out the upcoming technologies. By looking at information theory, namely the Shannon capacity, it's obvious that two ingredients can be mixed together to increase the capacity of a wireless system. First, firstly, expanding the bandwidth with new spectrums, and secondly, increase the spectrum efficiency. As far as bandwidth is concerned, 5G is leading the way by proposing new spectrums, 
in particular the introduction of the millimeter wave band. While the current release of 3GPP 5G NR limits the frequency to 62.6 GHz, the community and the next release are now looking for new spectrum opportunities in the mid-band between 6 and 20 gig, in the millimeter wave band above 60 gig, and in a greater preparation for the future, the use of the so-called subterrates band from 100 to 300 gigahertz. The later promise more than 50 gigahertz bandwidth availability for fixed and mobile services. The other possible trends rely on the spectral efficiency. Once again, 5G is leading the way with the introduction of the massive MIMO technology. Initial deployment is in the C-band 3.5 gig and the extension to 5G millimeter wave is expected. Increasing the spectral efficiency in the lowest band is an active research topic with new technologies. One of them to be discussed today is a distributed MIMO, also known as cell-free MIMO. Going back to the increase of the bandwidth, the subterrane spectrums raise many areas of interest. There is a promise of an extremely large bandwidth which will enable high-capacity links. Promises are great, but many challenges need to be overcome at the system, circuit design and nanoelectronics levels. Firstly, propagation is difficult, and as depicted here, environmental impacts such as tree foliage can create blockage. So, we need large antenna gains to balance the strong attenuation of the wave. Because large gain equates with pencil beam width, antenna beams must be steerable. On the radio frequency side, the use of very high frequency and large boundaries affects the performance of the RF transceiver, introducing potentially strong RF impairments. One of them is the phase noise that can become the dominant factor for performance. At the system level, we are investigating the definition of new modulation schemes which are inherently robust to phase noise. We recently demonstrated that the use of the polar QAM can increase the spectral efficiency up to a factor of 4 for strong phase noise on a bandwidth of 2 GHz. The figure on the right depicts the expected throughput based on the digital model of the wave propagation in the D-band, 140 GB, in a square of San Jose in the US. When considering classical single carrier QAM modulation, performance are highly degraded by phase noise, whereas the Leyte patent solution gives excellent results and demonstrate its robustness to phase noise. Another interesting application for subterrane band is a digital shower or hotspot scenario. The idea is to deploy local access points and design low-cost receivers on the mobile side. Here we give some very recent results we have had in the prediction of such a link capacity in the 300 GHz spectrum, assuming minus 20 dBm power transmitter and limited antenna gain. We also studied the performance that can be achieved by coupling on off keying modulation to the LDPC channel coding of the 5G NR. It should be mentioned in this simulation that the human body, modeled here by a water cylinder, creates strong blockage. A few years ago, we designed a concept in the V-band, 60 gig, um, that allow us to 6 gigabits per second transfer with on off keying modulation. We claim that this concept can be extended to the subterrane band and take advantage of the high bandwidth available in the forthcoming generations. To finish this part dedicated to the subterrane spectrums, let's cross our system studies with Leti Technology Roadmap. As discussed earlier, our, our RFIC team demonstrated a 100 gigabits per second full CMOS RF transceiver with a complete solution include, including cutting egg antenna concept. Leti is also currently investigating in new technologies for RF interconnects, including the packaging and the antenna integration, as well as the heterogeneous integration of 3-5 materials and silicon to fulfill the requirement of subterrates for power amplifier and LNA. Increasing spectral efficiency also play an important role in a context where spectrum is scarce and expensive. On the sub-6 gig, massive MIMO was introduced for 3.5 gig, 
but this technology is now is not scalable to lower spectrums, mainly because of, because of the size of the antenna. I recall that sub-6 gig and sub-2 gig spectrums are critical parts of the mobile networks to provide seamless connectivity in outdoor and outdoor to indoor coverage. In the millimeter wave band, it's a challenge to turn the massive memo into a reality. This year, we demonstrated at Leti a complete millimeter wave test bed with a true multi-user MIMO in the 26 gigahertz band. We designed our own digital modem on UFPGA circuits and we demonstrate the capability of our transmitter ray antenna to deliver real-time gigabits per second per user in a 400 MHz bandwidth. The extension of this platform to the 40 GHz spectrum is being studied with the integration in 2022 of a full digital beamforming architecture based on a CMOS RFIC designed internally. Going back to the sub-6 gigs, three strategies are possible to increase spectral efficiency. The first one is the densification of the network. We put more base stations with lower transmit power. 4G introduced small cells, but the management of the interference remains a difficult task. Today, one of the limitation factors of the cell capacity is clearly the intercell interference. The second one, already discussed in this talk, is the introduction of the massive MIMO technology. I call it colocalized massive MIMO. This technology is not scalable to low spectrum because of the antenna size. A new version of MIMO is being studied by academics and research institutes. The cell-free MIMO, also known as distributed MIMO or virtual MIMO. The idea is simple. We deploy a set of radio head units with few antennas. These radio head units are linked together to a central processing unit that can create, for a given user, a virtual MIMO array. With this paradigm, the concept of a cell disappears. At a given time, a user is associated to an array of antennas that can change dynamically. This technology is a serious candidate for the 5G evolution. To go into more details for this technology, I have depicted here the achievable throughput of a traditional cellular network with hexagonal latest cells. Close to the base station, we can expect the full capacity, here 120 megabits, in a 20 megahertz bandwidth. However, the intercell interference reduces the achievable throughput, and it's well known that today throughput within a cell is limited by the user at the cell edge. With a cell-free MIMO, it is possible to create a virtual array, here in this figure with 16 access points, thus creating a large virtual MIMO network. This network is less sensitive to interference, and the cell capacity can be greatly increased. We start work on this network architecture a few years ago at the system level for sub-6 GHz spectrum. In particular, we investigate signal processing algorithms, but also the design of low-cost, low-power radio head units based on a full CMOS RFLS architecture. It means that the signal is directly generated or collected by high-speed converters and the RF front-end module. It will Appealing for strong backhaul frontal capabilities with copper, fiber, or wireless. And if we want to reduce the energy impact of the radio ASX network, the design of very high efficiency PA. All these topics are being studied at Leti. I cannot end this short overview without talking about artificial intelligence, which is predicted to play an important role for in 6G. Artificial intelligence over interesting tools and powerful tools for optimizing our algorithms, systems, and circuits. As an example, we are currently investigating how IA can be used to dynamically adapt the digital predistortion function of a PA to correct the nonlinearities effect. Some interesting results on meta-learning will be published next January. To conclude, 6G starts now. And thanks to Leti's strong experience at the system level and its world-class nanoelectronics equipment, we are committed to delivering cutting edge for the next generation of wireless communications. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. As you said, 3.5 material seems mandatory, as well as chiplet integration. To conclude our workshop, Mr. Emilio Calvanese Strinati, senior scientist at Leti, will share his vision of the 6G revolution.
Good morning, good afternoon, depending from which part of the world you are connecting to the Leti Device Workshop 2021. I'm honored to share with you the vision of CLT and some of our latest funding on the semiconductor trends that will support the sustainable deployment of operation of 6G wireless communication and services. My name is Emilio Calvinestrinati. I'm the Future Wired System Scientific Innovation Director at CLT, the 5G star and the Rice G coordinator and the new CG Innocent Director. If after the presentation you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. SIGG will play a significant role in providing a nice infrastructure that will enable end users to perceive themselves as surrounded by a huge artificial brain, offering practically zero latency services, unlimited storage, and immersive connected capabilities. New services will be offered by 2030. For instance, five cents in traffic hologram technologies will teleport people from one place to another on the Earth. Why not support the connection for interactive uh, CG sky services too? Interactive optic communication or immersive interaction between humans or humans and machines, or even between artificial intelligence will eventually be possible. These new services will create new challenges for the technology and for the hardware, leading to a drastic increase of the performance needs. From a system level perspective, two families of key performance indicators, KPIs, are under discussion today for SIGG. First are KPIs that will ensure the conceptual continuity with previous generations. They will be also extended to potential applicability of a current generation for future services. This will require to set challenge performance enhancement request on the already envisioned uh, set of KPIs. Indeed, indeed, it will be possible to impose performance improvement of the order of factor 10, 100, or either 1,000. Such KPIs are, uh, for instance, the traffic capacity in terms of downlink, uplink, or backhaul, the latency, the connectivity reliability, and so on. With 6G, we will also be a totally new class of KPIs defined to support the connect a computer intertwining of artificial intelligence and networking, as well as the sanction of the connect a, uh, compute cache and control capabilities for non-terrestrial networks. Moreover, since the network is evolving to a network of intertwining intelligence, where communication is instrumental to the achievement of a goal or the realization of a task, thus the new KPIs must be defined in terms of energy per goal or inference reliability. While energy efficiency has already been a concern in previous generation, today with 6G, the sustainability of the technology, the network cooperation, the cost, and the electromagnetic field radiation are a major concern. This translates into several new KPIs addressing various levels of sustainability, including the hardware. The question now is how can we achieve such KPIs? What is the role of the new art design and new materials? There are three technology pillars for future 6G networks that strongly are impacted by hardware. First, the exploitation of new subterrest spectrum. The first natural solution and evolution of wireless communication systems is to provide higher communication capacity. This actually followed the mantra from Cloud Shannon, where actually capacity can be uh, enhanced by exploiting larger communication bandwidth. With 6G, this translates with targeting wireless per capacity at the level of tens of terabits per second, and actually exploring a spectrum of uh, new frontiers between 90 gigahertz and 300 gigahertz, and even a higher spectrum like for the visible light spectrum. Second, the pervasive and omnipresent support of artificial intelligence for network operation and services, where artificial intelligence operate at the edge of the network to support effective operation of data tr uh, transmission over the air. This actually is an operational reality today with 5G and will be even more consolidated with 6G. In addition, 6G will also radically change the way intelligent agents, natural and artificial, can interact and influence each other. Instead of exchanging raw data, intelligent agents will share knowledge and communicate through meaning message, semantic message, 
that intelligent agent can generate and interpret it. We see G will indeed experience the immersive fusion of cyber and physical spaces. Humans, things, and events will be turned into information, generating a lot of knowledge that will be shared, and a large amount of information that will be uh, shared and consumed in the network. That actually will cause 20% of the world energy consumption by 2035. Third, CG will benefit from the new paradigm of reconfigured with intelligence surfaces, with new materials and new innovative design of massive reconfigurable antennas arrays will enable to artificially control the propagation channel, opening new frontiers for the dynamic management of resources and also opportunity to reach and pretty low energy cost uh, for communications. Several speculative visions uh, are conjecturing today on what CGU service will be able to deliver at the Ryzen 2030. Nevertheless, the hard to design process, it's a very preliminary stages. The reality today is that hardware, technology, and the new materials required for effectively meet the impressive performance targets required by CG and the networks have not been designed, tested, or even do not exist yet. Today, a solid vision on the cost-benefit trade-off of machine learning and artificial intelligence supporting the CG networks operation and this optimization is missing. This includes the possible support from hardware efficiency operation effectiveness, and the immersible cost due to data acquisition, transfer, and processing. Our vision is that SIGG impose new classes of KPIs on hardware and technology. First, KPIs specifying the process technology and the requirements on hardware performance, and KPIs to support effective operation of the system-level KPIs defined. We can divide the SIGG hardware into two inter-twin inter classes, hardware for sustainability, which include the end-to-end eco-design of the hardware, the energy efficiency at the hardware level, and diffuse hardware security include data collection, processing, and certification of autonomous decision at the edge. Then the next second class, hardware for high performance, following the trend of the wireless ter ter terabits per second, communication, computing of exaflops, huge amount of memory, and hardware flexibility for high heterogeneous devices and heterogeneous operation of environment condition, but also for lowering energy operation cost of 6G. On paper, from an information theory point of view, exploring the frontier of a wider bandwidth is the straightforward evolution path to follow. Let's say that more bandwidth equals more capacity. Operational reality is different. First, the spectrum should be available. It should be with propagation characteristic favorable for communication and for sustainable communication. But there is even more. Here begins the nightmare of hardware and technology engineers transforming a nominal potential into a harder reality. This is one of the reasons why hardware in 6G will matter. There are several issues to be solved. For instance, today we know how to prototype hardware at the low D band, indicated here in the figure as beyond 5G bands, and we, with acceptable energy efficiency, acceptable means of the order of tens to 20%. But going higher in frequencies, CMOS technology are not adapted to output the needed transmission power. BCMOS present very high cost and they meet their energy efficiency target only up to 160 gigahertz. The challenge is severe when we target the IC designed for high power performance, including selectability, isolation, and also FMAX, among other targets. Then there is a dead valley between the 200 and 300 gigahertz. New transistor, new hybridation, or particularly uh, mixing materials to make the most of their in different advantages of compensating what is uh, the operational problem, a uh, challenge that we are investigating actively at CERA today. There's an additional family of issues. Transmitting at uh, higher frequencies present losses in the connection between the RF and antennas. We expect a factor of 100 uh, of losses between the current use 
millimeter wave frequencies in 5G and what will be in 6G. At SEA, we are investigating hard this design of integrating RF with antennas. AI is a computing intense. AI takes billions of operations and requires to store weights in memory, causing human energy consumption due to required data shared among the wireless connected intelligent agents. The energy consumed to complete an inferior task is very dependent on the, how much data you have to move around, process, store, and retrieve. As so far, we are exploring hardware-aware intelligent algorithms to automatically estimate the capability of the transceiver hardware over which the protocol runs, that is shared, and then to configure a operation based on the hardware capability we are, uh, of interactive agents. Embracing analog design of significant low power, going semantic, sharing knowledge semantically to emulate how the, our brain works. New materials, new massive and flexible antenna arrays, and the new paradigm of reconfigurable intelligent phases offer to 6G the opportunity to artificially adapt the wireless propagation environment to, be, uh, to the communication needs. The goal is to create and shape on demand a red environment where the wireless propagation conditions are co-engineered with the physical layer signaling and investigate how to utilize the new capability offered by the comfortable intelligence surfaces. In this direction, SIA is leading and coordinating the RICG project. The project actually starts in January 2021 and has an ambition to explore the fundamentals to enable wireless environment as a service and then to provide effectiveness and feasibility of the key requirements, functions, including this hardware. Therefore, there is a potential of artificially controlling and shaping the wireless communication channel to support dynamic adaptation of future stringent and highly varying CG services requirements in terms of electromagnetic field emissions, localization accuracy, energy efficiency, secrecy guaranteeing, as well as legislation and regulation changes will incur minimal cost, compute, network reconfiguration, and redesign. CA Lady is actively participating to the race towards 6G. We launched in 2020 the new 6G initiative aimed to establishing a strong link between microelectronics and the telecommunication world. The new 6G initiative is exploring efficient solutions for adapting and exploiting leading edge R&D on edge AI, investigating on new hardware design and an innovative solution for effective intertraining of intelligence and cyber physical systems, security of the infrastructure and the store, share and process information, new antennas and new materials, new network architecture focusing on operational optimization, and new hardware design of integrated circuits, digital components, and to achieve low energy consumption while ensuring performance of high spectrum wireless uh, communication and computation. The trade-off between sustainability and performance. Investigating on sustainability semiconductor technology and inv investigating on new protocols. CG hardware matter. Let's shape together the sustainable and effective CG. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Emilio. This concludes our workshop. I hope you enjoyed it and that it brings you an original way of seeing the telecommunication evolution. Let me please thank again the speaker for the presentation. I would like to remind you our next event in March 2022 concerning healthcare and June for our famous Late Innovation Day. Also, let me please once again thank our dear sponsor for supporting this event. Mesdames, Messieurs, ladies, gentlemen, I will be delighted to see you soon. In the meantime, please take care and stay safe.